Good morning. My name is Gary Wyram, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to today's Good News. As we continue the Today's Good News series on the greatest hits from Proverbs, we're getting pretty close to the end. Today we will be in Proverbs chapter 30, which is in fact the next to last chapter in the book. Proverbs has been referred to as a workshop in wisdom, so not surprisingly chapter 30 continues with wisdom as its theme. What really draws it apart from the rest of the book though is that it is not presented as human wisdom gained through the experience, but as prophecy given by the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> As we prepare to dive into this very interesting scripture, let me share a non-scriptural story with you that may aid us in keeping open minds about what is and what isn't true wisdom. A young woman brings her fiancé home to meet her parents. After dinner, the father invites the fiancé to his study for a chat. So what are your plans, the father asks. I'm a Bible scholar, replies the fiancé. Hmm, the father says, but what will you do to provide a nice house for my daughter to live in? I will study and God will provide for us, the young man replies. And how will you buy her a beautiful engagement ring, asks the father. I will concentrate on my studies, the young man replies. God will provide for us. And children, asks the father. How will you support children? Don't worry, sir. God will provide, replies the fiancé. With each of the father's questions, the young man continues to insist that God will provide. Afterwards, the mother asks, how did it go, honey? The father answers, the bad news is he has no job and no plans. The good news is he thinks I'm God. <laughs> Agur, the author of Proverbs 30, starts out with humility. When he says, surely I am more stupid than any man and do not have the understanding of a man. I neither learned wisdom nor have knowledge of the Holy One. Then he points out the need for humility by asking, who has ascended in, into heaven or descended? Who has gathered the wind in his fists? Who has bound the waters in a garment? Who has established all the er ends of the earth? What is his name? And what is his son's name, if you know? Then he goes on to provide a series of admonitions. The ability to address Agur's opening statement of humility, to answer his follow-up question revealing our need for humility, and to comply with his admonitions are all wrapped up in verses 5 and 6. Please turn with me now in your Bibles to Proverbs chapter 30, verses 5 and 6, and we'll read them together. Every word of God is pure. He is a shield to those who put their trust in him. Do not add to his words, lest he rebuke you and you be found a liar. Every word of God is pure. When we read God's word, we can take comfort in the fact that we don't have to pick and choose what's good and what's not. The Bible is not a book filled with mostly true information mixed with some false information, leaving it up to us to dis distinguish which is which. The Bible isn't that way because God is not that way. He is 100% pure. We can fully depend on getting the perfect and complete truth from him and his word. He's a shield to those who put their trust in him. This statement is a reminder that God will always be there to stand in the way of dangers that come to his followers. This doesn't mean we should take this for granted, but it should give us confidence where God wants us to have confidence. Though overconfidence is dangerous, underconfidence can be destructive. Do not add to his words, lest he rebuke you and you be found a liar. Every word of God is pure, but man's word is not. Thus the importance of not adding to or taking away from it. Mark Twain famously said, It ain't the parts of the Bible that I can't understand that bother me, it's the parts that I do understand. Can you identify with that? Have you encountered scripture that you wished you could change because it convic convicted you of your own shortcomings? I certainly have. But Agur tells us that those who choose to do so are liars. To say we trust God and then try to change his word is lying, proving that we don't actually trust him. Unfortunately, much, much of the religious world seems to think that changing God's word is not only okay, but necessary in order to accommodate changing social standards. But that's not the way the Bible is to be, to be read or followed. It is timeless. It is a perfect and complete book that is only spoiled when man chooses to change or add to or take away from its instruction. We should spend our time following God's word, not looking for opportunities to change it. Here at Calvary Chapel Rosarito, we point our church to the word of God, studying it verse by verse. In Proverbs 30, verses 5 and 6, we're given three foundational reasons for doing that. One, God's words are true. 
Two, God protects his people through his word. And three, he gives us the ability to not be deceived because we can identify when his word is being misquoted or misused out of context. And that is today's good news.